Hi, I'm Dami from eLearning Channel Museum. Finally, we have reached last lesson of level two, which is lesson 10. This lesson will be divided into two sessions. First one, we're going to talk about playing in root position and waltz pattern. Waltz pattern and root position, which we already know. And second session will be new patterns of playing chords, which is our ability bass. Most often used in classical times. Maybe you may have heard. In this Mozart time, used a lot of arbority bass. So that one will be in the second session. In the first session, we will review root position. Yes. And playing in waltz pattern. We have learned it for a couple of weeks, right? But there is more combinations, changing chords in each measure, and also there is changing fingerings on the right hand, and more. So now let's see how it goes. First, I'm going to play this song in root position with the regular tempo. that we have learned C, F, G7, and G. Only the difference from the previous lesson is it has more change within a measure. There's a couple of places that we have to switch the chord. Like if you're looking at the first line, there is G7 and C. So we have to switch two chord within a measure. In also second line, there is G, G7, and C. And if you move it on to the third line, there is more. F, C, and G7. So it keeps switching the chord often. Of course, we know all the chords, but we have never changed this many times. So today, we're going to work on how to change chord in every measure and how fast you can work on and also coordination between right hand and the left hand. First, let's look at the left hand chord. I blanked everything. So I want you to write it down the chord and remember what kind of chord it is. Because at the end of this lesson, there is test to recognize the chords and writing down the repetition and of course as well as different positions too. So as we go along, I want you to write it down the chords. Now let's look at the score. First chord, C. What is the C chord? Yes, C, E, G. The second measure, C again. What about G? You just hold it the top G and these two notes goes down. So B, B, G. That's the G chord. Why? Because the G is G, B, D. But it's too far. So what we do is we just hold it the G and if we move it, these two notes down, then it will be G. We already talked about it, right? So that's the G. What about next? G7. Yes, then B and D held, and leave it the D and play an F instead. Why? Because G, B, D is G chord, and seventh means you're literally adding the seventh. So G seventh. You know, right? If you don't 
don't know, you have to go back previous lesson and check. But I will just move it on to the next one. What about the next chord? C again. So from G seventh to C. And second line. C. C. And G G seven. Next. So G and G seven. So you have to practice moving your finger from three to two, like D to F. Because your top and bottom stays only changing note is D to F. So it will be from D to F. So remember this one. But sometimes people just keep howling and changing these notes. No, you have to play your whole entire chord. Lifting up and play it. So remember that and see. What about the third line? G seventh. So which is going like this from C2. Do you see if I move slow? It will be like this. And the third line is most confusing line because it just keep changing the chords. F. So F stays and these two bottom and top shifting up. Do you see it? So you have to remember, try not to find it but instead, you have to remember how fingers are moving from C to with G chord, top stays bottom to goes down. Practice like this. And from G7 to F, it's like third line. Then, you know, the F stays and bottom and top just shifting up. Do you see? That's the fastest way. So actually, Instead of moving your finger, just slide your wrist, then it's easier. Do you see it? Just slide. And from F to C, how are you going to move? Yes, C stays, and these two notes goes down. Do you see from here to shifting down? So stay as close as possible from the keys and move around. That's the easiest way and the fastest way to play the chords. Now, what about from C to G seventh? Definitely G stays and it will be like this if you're looking at it, spreading. So from C, E, G, E instead of E, moving to F and bottom note goes down. Do you see it from C to little bit at the bottom two notes, right? So from G7 to move it onto the F. Do you remember? Yeah, hold it F and shifting up like this. We just did it, right? And what about C? C stays and top two note comes down. So just shifting down again this way. The next line, C, C, G. Definitely, if it's G, you will hold it G and bottom two note goes down. So, like this. And G seventh. Yes, B and G, bottom and top stays. And instead of D, you move it to F. And the next, the very last measure is C, F, C means you have to switch the chord every beat. So C, F, C. Basically, you know all the chords. We have learned it already. The problem is you have to find the position as fast as possible so that we can play the song without stopping it. But the problem is really hard. You're confused with looking at the right hand, finding the left hand chords, and you have to play it at different times. That's why it's really confusing. You know everything, you understand everything, but your hands doesn't follow as you know. So you have to practice separate hands first, especially left hand. 
most often people start working on the right hand first. No, right hand is actually easy. It just comes right away if you practice three times, around three, four times. But the left hand doesn't come right away. You have to practice at least six sevens or sometimes more than 10. First, start working on left hand and especially as you play the chords along, think about it. From C to G, when you shift, which way is the fastest way? Hold it the G down and move it to B. Like this. And if it's from G to G seventh, only middle notes change from D to F. And if you move it to C, yes, you have to hold the G and move it bottom two. So in your mind, you have to know when to switch it, how to switch, which notes to switch it. So practice left hand by itself until you memorize the position completely. Then add it right hand because these chord combinations will use over and over again. In any song, you will use this chord combination often. So if you memorize it right now, later on, it's really easy to play it. This time, let's play right hand. If you look at the rhythm, Rhythm is long, short, short, long, short, short. So basically quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, eighth, eighth. Of course, there is half note once in a while, but the rhythm is similar. So it goes long, short, short, long, short, short, or quarter, eighth, eighth, quarter, eighth, eighth, the same. One. Whichever is comfortable for you, you can count, but the rhythm is always the same. Now, if you remember the rhythm, check the fingerings. I wrote some plays to finger numbers, especially looking at the first two measures. Start with C and C, D. E with finger number three, definitely, yes. What about the next note? The same E, but we have to switch to two finger number two instead of playing three again. Why? Yes, if you play it with the same finger, then when we have to go up, there is no finger left to play. So you have to play with finger number two, switching it. Just like last week, we learned it, right? Switching the fingers. You have to think about, you have to be careful, okay? So try not to play it D with finger number two, but instead you have to switch it, right? Got it? Good. Now let's go back to very beginning and play it slow, right hand only. Ready? Start with the C. One, two, Three, go. C, D, but switch the finger to two. One, and. And skip to finger number two. Two, three, four. Next to note is five with the G. One, and, two, and. Because this is a two count. And the next note is F, one, N, two, N. Switch finger. One, N, two, N, G. three counts. So you can count one and two and or you can count to six. Why? Because one quarter note is the same as two eighth note. So if it's a three quarter note then it's gonna be six eighth note. So it will be one two three four five six. You can count 
as eighth note as one, or you can count either one and two and. But don't forget to count because otherwise you will cut the rhythm here. Moving on to the third line, G seventh chord, right hand starts with a G, G and. And now here, left hand takes eighth note with a G because that's the melody line. So even if you play right hand by itself, play a left hand too because that's the melody line goes. So third line, and So you have to hold it for four. So pretty easy, except the switching the fingers. So right hand is okay. Just I think problem part is left hand when you add it with the right hand. Now let's see how it goes. Right hand start with the C. Left hand starts with the C chord. So both C's. Ready? One, two, three, go. And So if we play it from the third line, beginning of the third line, G7, and two, and three, and four, and F chord, C chord here, you're switching the chord every two beats. So when you're changing it, you have to remember, as I said, from F to C, how it moves, and G7. So practice especially the third line G7 F C G7 F C so practice a lot so you have to know you can change as fast as possible so blocking the chord in root position is pretty easy just only when you play it both end together it's really confusing 
it will take around two to three weeks to get along. So don't get frustrated too soon. Just keep working and it should be fine.